بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Yusuf Raza and this is a collaboration between Kalima Institute and Islamic Learning Foundation We are talking about the legacy of Ibrahim عليه السلام When we put on that ihram when a good group from among us, even if all of us do not go, there are people who are representing us and vicariously we are living this journey of Hajj through them. Us sitting at home and those pilgrims going towards Mecca are commemorating and reliving the legacy of Ibrahim salam. Putting on that ihram, shedding the clothes that create distinctions between people, the clothes that represent stratification within society, these different tiers, social classes that exist. We all don those two garments, plain white garments, reminding ourselves of our journey in this life and our stature really as equal people in pursuit of Allah, in pursuit of Tawheed. We are remembering how Ibrahim alayhi salam left the ways of his people, the stratifications that existed in his society on account of deities that they worshipped. That there was so much in that culture that was polytheistic, not just in the form of idols that they worshipped, but associated with those idols was commerce, politics, everything in that society. There was a lot of power associated with the concept of idols in that society. So naturally, there would be a lot of injustice. As Ibrahim السلام, is growing older, he is growing more and more wary and frustrated of these customs of his people. Naturally, like everybody else, he is taught and socialized in that culture. But he is a person of reflection. He is a person of tafakkur and tadabbur. And he thinks and he reflects and he sees that this does not make sense. And in this reflection, the Quran captures this segment of the journey of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Really him beginning his journey towards Allah. Like so many of the hujjaj do, that so many of the pilgrims do, that so many of us are required to do in our life, generally as well. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ آزَرُ And this is in Surah Al-An'am. Allah tells us that Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he said to his father, Azar, are you going to take idols as gods? إِنِّي أَرَاكَ وَقَوْمَكَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ I see you and your people in clear misguidance. This misguidance in the form of shirk, but this misguidance also in how shirk results in so many social evils that prevail. وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِيِّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And thus we showed Ibrahim the wonders of the heavens and the earth وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ So he would be sure in faith. Recognizing the shortcomings of the ways of his people his inquiry begins, his journey starts, he's doubtful of whatever his people are doing and so he is in search of faith. Among the deities that his people worshipped was the sun god, was the moon god. Ibrahim السلام, having already rejected the idea of idols, so these the sun god and the moon god were actual idols that his people used to worship. He did not want to consider them at all. He would already dismissed that idea. But the sun as God, the moon as God, the star as God, that is a reflection that Ibrahim السلام, did consider. And so when the night grew dark upon him, he saw a star and said, now this is Ibrahim السلام, entering into that reflective phase. He's seen the star, the sun, the moon before, but now he's searching in pursuit of Allah, in pursuit of truth. Now he's looking at the star, the moon, the sun from a very different perspective. And he said, this is my Lord. قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي This is my Lord. فَلَمَّا أَفَلَ But when it set, 
قال لا أحب الآفلين He said I do not love things that set Already Ibrahim alayhi salam is cognizant that the deity or the one he is going to worship he is going to love that he is going to have a very personal relationship with and this feature of the star setting precludes any possibility of real personal loving relationship there falamma ra al qamara bazigha qala hadha rabbi and when he saw the moon rising he said this one is my lord falamma afala qala la illam yahdini rabbi la akunanna min al qaumi dhalin but when that too disappeared he said if my rabb note that he does realize that he has a rabb but it's not the star it's not the moon if my rabb does not guide me i will definitely be of those who are astray falamma ra ash-shams bazigha then when he saw the sun shining he said this must be my rock lord hada rabbi hada akbar this is the greatest falamma afal qala ya qaumi inni bari'un mimma tushrikun he said my people i completely reject whatever it is that you associate with allah in worship whatever it is i don't want to have anything to do with that my rabb is not the star not the moon not the sun this star this sun this moon they have to conform to patterns they have to conform to some order outside of themselves and so if this is there is an order outside of themselves where is that coming from they can't go against that they can't transcend that they have limitations my rabb the one that i need to have a loving relationship with that i need to commit myself to cannot be subject to those limitations inni wajjahtu wajhiya lil ladhi fatara as-samawati wal arda hanifa so i have turned my face towards the one who has originated the heavens and the earth who does not have incarnations in the form of star moon or sun who is who transcends beyond these creations but these creations are ayats of that rabb he recognizes this created nature of reality and how through this he relates with allah or understands allah but these things within themselves are not allah wa ma ana min al mushrikeen and i am not of the polytheists note that even in surah nahl and here We see that Ibrahim alayhi salam is designated as having never committed shirk. One can argue that Ibrahim alayhi salam worshiped the star, the moon and the sun. But we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he does not judge or punish anyone for being on a particular destination along the journey. because that's not a destination per se that is a way station that's not anything worthy of blame as long as your direction is towards allah so with the star the moon the sun the direction was always towards allah the way station was erroneous it was a false understanding and because his sincerity was towards allah and he was headed towards him that was never held against him that wasn't even considered shirk and so more than anything else in this journey of hajj our direction is towards allah and whatever understanding of allah we develop along the way we constantly carry this recognition that allah hu akbar that allah is greater whatever understanding i have is fallible is limited there is so much more to him and that my journey continues one step after another i keep going i keep going i keep going with him with allah at the center of all my tawaf of all my movements i am dedicating myself to tawhid humbling myself recognizing the fallibility of my ways wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin